On Thursday, December 29, 2011, Samoa and Tokelau stepped west into the future across the international date line. Skipping December 30th, the next day was declared to be December 31st, 2011. The move was purely for economic convenience. Samoa has close trading ties with Australia, New Zealand, and China. Being one day behind their closest neighbors, cut two days, Monday and Friday, from each work week. While most Samoans welcome the change, the skipped over date presents serious challenges to Christians who conscientiously believe the week has cycled without interruption since creation and they need to worship on a specific day of the week. When it is important to worship on a precise day, deleting one day from the calendar can have weighty consequences. The fact is, the international date line is a relatively recent man-made invention. It zigzags its way down the Pacific Ocean and has changed several times over the years. The international date line is the imaginary line on the Earth that separates two consecutive calendar days. The date in the Eastern Hemisphere, to the left of the line, is always one day ahead of the date in the Western Hemisphere. It has been recognized as a matter of convenience and has no force in international law. Without the international date line, travelers going westward would discover when they returned home one day more than they thought had passed even though they had kept careful tally of the days they were away. This happened to Magellan's crew after the first circumnavigation of the globe. Likewise, a person traveling eastward would find one fewer day had elapsed than he had recorded, as happened to Phileas Fogg in Around the World in 80 Days by Jules Verne. The Gregorian calendar in use around the world today is a solar calendar having a continuous weekly cycle. On a solar calendar, the days and years are measured by the sun but the months and weeks are purely arbitrary, having no link to any movement in nature. This is what necessitates the international date line. It established a man-made beginning to the day to unite the whole world on one Gregorian date. So the international date line has proven to be a real problem for the inhabitants of Samoa, because Samoa's date was different from its surrounding neighbors, causing economic problems, they changed the location of the international date line. The international date line is an attempt by man to solve a man-made problem, which inevitably occurs on a round earth when one uses a continuous weekly cycle, not anchored to the heavenly bodies and the rotation of the earth. However, when one chooses to follow the Creator's loony solar calendar, Yahuwah, as the arbiter of time, has set the moon to govern the monthly and weekly cycles for specific locations. Yahuwah removes all need of the international date line, and thus removes all dependence on the Gregorian calendar and man's technology to straighten things out. All one needs is the moon to know when the months and weeks begin. It is widely believed the continuously cycling week in use today has come down uninterrupted from creation via Noah and his sons. The fact this is not true is demonstrated when we consider the various waves of immigration that took place after the flood. When Noah's descendants emigrated from the mountains of Ararat, some moved to the east, others to the west. If a tribe of Seventh-day Sabbath-keeping Shemites moved to the east towards the rising sun, 
Eventually, several years later, they would come to a point halfway around the world. Being Sabbath keepers, they would have kept very careful track of time. Let us say, just for this example, they had used a continuous weekly cycle, as the world does today. Due to the rotation of the Earth and the fact they moved towards the rising sun, once they reached the far side of the world, they would be 12 hours ahead of their original starting point at Ararat. Now consider that a tribe of Seventh-day Sabbath-keeping Japhethites also moved from Ararat. This tribe, however, moved to the west following the setting sun. Being Sabbath keepers, they also would have kept a careful track of time. Again, for the sake of illustration, let us say they too used continuously cycling weeks. A few years later, upon arriving at the same point on the other side of the world occupied by the tribe of Shemites, who moved east, the tribe of Japhethites, who moved west, would be 12 hours behind the time at Ararat. The two tribes, one having gone east, the other west, would discover they were a full 24 hours apart. This would not be due to either group losing track. Rather, it is simply a function of the rotation of the Earth that when one group travels east, they travel ahead of the daylight, while the group that travels west travels backward into the night that comes before the day. So which group is correct? The answer is, if they had been using a continuous weekly cycle, they would both be correct, which is not possible. And herein lies the crux of the problem. This conundrum actually proves the ideology of continuously cycling weeks from the days of creation to be absolutely false. As people spread out and populated the world in the centuries following the Flood, they took with them the method of timekeeping used by Adam and his descendants, which was brought down through the Flood by Noah and his sons. This method of timekeeping, established by Yahuwah at creation, was the lunisolar calendar. Unlike the solar Gregorian calendar, which uses only the sun for marking time in days and years, the lunar solar calendar uses both the sun and the moon for time calculation. Like the solar Gregorian calendar, the lunar solar biblical calendar uses the sun to measure days and years. Unlike the solar calendar, however, the lunar solar calendar uses the moon for regulating months. This, in turn, keeps track of the seven-day weeks because the weekly cycle restarts with each new moon. The result is, if two tribes moved away from Ararat, one to the east, the other to the west, and encountered each other a few years later on the other side of the world, they would both be 12 hours different from their original starting point at Ararat, but they would not be 24 hours apart from each other. As each tribe moved, they would keep track of time by watching the moon. As the tribes moved closer together on the far side of the world, their observation of the moon would also draw closer and closer together so that when they finally met, they would both be as at the beginning of their journey, on the same day and the same date. Here is seen the beauty and symmetry of the heavenly system of timekeeping. At creation, Yahuwah specified the lights, plural, in the heavens were to be used for marking the passage of time as well as noting the time for all religious observances. And Yahuwah said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, 
and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. The word seasons comes from the word moed. This is a word widely used to refer to all religious gatherings. In fact, all of the feasts listed in Leviticus 23, the first of which is the seventh day Sabbath, are also called moedah, the plural of moed. When the Creator set aside the Sabbath day and blessed and sanctified it as holy time, He also created a system whereby people could keep track of the passage of time so they could know and worship Yahuwah Elohim when His Sabbath arrived. It took both sun and moon to create this perfect system of timekeeping. As the anchor to the months and the weeks, the moon regulates time accurately, no matter where you are on earth. Thus were a tribe of Shemites to move east and a tribe of Japhethites move west and reunite a few years later, they would be united on the same weekly schedule because the basis for their weekly count is anchored in the heavens. It is not grounded on any man-made institution. Scripture explicitly states that the moon was created to mark the passage of time. He appointed, created, the moon for seasons, Moadah. The sun knoweth his going down. Because the modern weekly cycle has no ties to anything in nature, problems arise that do not exist in the lunisolar calendar of creation. Specifically, the need for an arbitrary international date line. A continuous weekly cycle anchored to nothing in nature is a man-made institution. The international date line is simply a man-made solution to a man-made problem. On the counterfeit pagan papal calendar, months are arbitrary and dates have an artificial starting point at the international date line, itself arbitrary and movable. Only on the biblical calendar are months and dates anchored to the lights in the heavens, which were given by Yahuwah for the express purpose of regulating time. Yahuwah's calendar, using the combined action of the sun and the moon for marking the passage of days, weeks, months, and years, will stand forever. It forms an integral part of the very structure of the heavens. It can be witnessed and used by everyone on earth and accurately regulates time and holy days. It shall be established forever, like the moon, even like the faithful witness in the sky. With all of this in mind, which calendar will you use to find the correct dates to worship? Man's, the Gregorian calendar, or Yahuwah's, the Luni Solar calendar?